It's crunch time here in the Bundesliga as we get started for episode 17 of Werder Bremen Retake the Bundesliga. We're into March. We've got three key games coming up and a chance to move up in the table. We are just knocking on the door of a European spot here in the Bundesliga. If you're, if you're not sure about how it works, the top six get the spots as you see there indicated by the color but if the dfp cup winners already got a european spot then they take the seventh team well, we're looking at dortmund frankfurt leipzig and myself the other three are all above me in one of these spots so there's a good chance that the seventh spot is going to end up being a european spot that's currently hertha but i'm knocking on the door and look at who we've got coming up. Freiburg's below us in the table, but then we've got Hertha. The opportunity is in front of us. We control our destiny there, and then we've got a matchup with Leverkusen. Of course, we're a little banged up at the moment. Phil Foden's going to miss at least our next game against Freiburg. Uh, Jeremy Doku is, I believe he'll be back, but he's been banged up. And then Owen Vindal's out for a couple months. So we are not at full strength, and we're in the midst of a, of a tight part of the schedule. So... We, uh, we really are getting our depth tested here at this part of the season. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for me. You can follow us on Twitter at TotalFIFACM, on Instagram at TotalFIFACareerMode, and of course on our website for all kind of in-depth stats, TotalFIFACareerMode.com. You can see the starting lineup this is our second game in four days, and we're in the midst of three games in seven days. So. In addition to the injured players, you know, stamina is really going to be an issue. And, and you can see here, Trincao, Agustin, McKenney, all going to have issues here. It, probably not make it through a, a, a full game with our entire attack. And so we're really going to have to get creative with the depth. Hopefully we can get up early and, uh, and get those guys out of there. Because not only are they not going to make it through this game at full strength, but you know, we got another game in a couple days coming up. So early on, trying to get something going, but just can't connect on the pass. Really would like to get an early lead here against the team that, that we really need to go ahead and, and beat. Getting ahead has not been our strength. In fact, we've been playing from behind a lot. As you see them, all oh, an open goal. Maximiano with not one save, but two. Two great saves by Maximiano from point-blank range. Getting up off the ground quickly and making the second save. Absolutely fantastic goalkeeping. Of course, it's going to give them a corner. And these corners and crosses have been trouble all season. And sure enough, sure enough, they find the head of the attacker. And Maximiano gets beat point blank right in front of him. You can see it just gets to the highest point. Just gets to the highest point. Surrounded by defenders. And what can you do? What can you do? It's right in front of him. No matter what angle you look at, it's right in front of him. So once again, once again we're playing from behind. Troy Deeney has, has been a, a solid goal scorer here in the league, and I think he got us earlier in the season too. But, you know, what can you do? So we're playing from behind. Luckily we're used to it at this point. And, uh, ooh, a play like that helps. Now we're going to get a free kick. Now we have not connected on a free kick all season. And, and, you know, for most of the season we weren't close, but we're getting closer. As Trincao lines one up and, oh, just barely. It almost curves back around. Gets a good bend on it. Gets it up over the line. Coming back, coming back. And it's just wide. It wasn't high. It would have gone in had it been a little bit to the right. Not sure if the keeper was there or not. But we're getting closer is the point. We're going to get one of these free kicks at some point. I don't know when, but we're going to get one. Oh, another close call. Johannes Egestein cutting across. Getting... A wide open look and just letting it kind of fly wide finds a post. Ooh, a matter of inches. That's two goals, two two potential goals missed by a matter of uh, of about a combined foot here. As we try to get something going now, we're gonna try and build a little counter attack here, and and they've been pressuring us a little bit. So hopefully we can make something happen here as we get out in the open field. Sangare up to Weston McKinney, and now we've got numbers. Look at Liberato Kaseki on the run with that blazing speed. Wide open. He's going to take it himself. No, he finds Francisco Trincao who finds the back of the net. Francisco Trincao who has just 
held the offense on his shoulders lately. And you can see the run he's making. And he just, just gets deeper than his defender. Let's see how we got this open. We're starting to break it down here in, in, in wide open space. McKinney with the ball. We've got a four on three building. All right, four guys spread wide across the entire pitch. Three guys defending. Everybody else is chasing. Then you're going to see McKinney just kind of slow up and bait that defender to come out while Kaseki makes the run. That defender in front of McKinney really has to make the decision. And that right there is what opens it up. And then from there, we've got options. Now, what normally happens, you see Trincao making the run, is normally he just kind of finds a, a, a soft spot right there in the, in the middle of the box while the defender runs to the goal line, and then the, and the, the winger can just kind of pass it back to him. And that's probably what the defender thinks he's going to do, except this time Trincao goes all the way to the, to the net and, uh, and, and just is wide open for an easy goal, about an easy as a, of a goal as you'll see from him. So we tie the game up as we hopefully get into halftime with a, with a tie game. Thank goodness. Whew, that was a little closer than I would have liked. So we're going to go to the half tied. And, you know, not a real action-packed game, about as even as you're going to see. 50-50 on the possession, five shots apiece. A little more even than I'd like a game like this to be. These bottom-of-the-table teams have really been a nightmare this season. And uh, that, that seems to be a FIFA thing this year. It's much worse than I've seen in past years. Ryan Gravenberg out on the wing, makes a move, spin move, and Max Agustin with the little dink in. Ryan Gravenberch makes it happen. You see on the replay, just spins around his man in a tight spot. And then Max Egestein just goes five hole on the goalkeeper. Right place, right time. Puts himself in great position. And Max Egestein, now third on the team in goals for a guy who's playing uh, defensive midfielder a lot and missed a month. Third on the team in goals with seven. And that gives us a 2 1 lead. And now. We're in the driver's seat a little bit, assuming we don't do that. Oh, point blank, we give it back. We give it right back. What happened to the defense here? This has been an Achilles heel all year. And you see, there's Mohamed Simakan. Good defensive awareness, but he just backs off his man. There's another guy back there, but clearly the less important guy marks the wrong man and leaves... Oh, leaves this guy wide open. So once again, we're unable to hold a lead. And now it's going to take a late goal to get three points out of this instead of just one. So you saw these guys getting tired. We're going to go with, with Noah Okafor in for Johannes Agustin. And uh, Jeremy Doku is going to come in for Weston McKinney. You know, with about ten minutes left here. And, uh, you, you know, these are not guys, you know, particularly McKinney, who I take out a lot. But, we, you know, we got another game coming up, and they're dying out there. We have to. And Doku's been really a super sub for us. He's a fantastically talented player who just doesn't have enough stamina for a full game. And uh, Okafor has really come along well as well. And there's Doku making his presence felt immediately. You see that blazing speed and acceleration. He can get by anybody. And then here's Okafor. Setting something up, making a run. Can he find a man? There's Trincao again. Francisco Trincao with the brace. And that's going to be the game winner in the 87th minute. Right place, right time, as always, as he's got such a knack to do. And how does he find the open spot? He does exactly what I was saying before. He lets the defender run to the goal, and he finds that soft spot at the, at the top of the box. And that's what the defender was expecting last time. And he did the opposite. This time he flips the script. The, the defender's helpless on the goal line, and he beats him. Two goals for Francisco Trincao, including the late winner. And we get out of Freiburg with three essential points. We cannot, cannot give away points to these lower bottom-of-the-table teams. We just can't afford to do it. Uh, at this point in the season, you got to get three. So what does that do to us? Well, we're right where we were. We're, we're, we're still two back of Hertha, but that's within striking distance. We're playing them. We're going to their place. We need three points, and we are in what is probably going to be a European spot, and certainly puts us within striking distance of a guaranteed one. So this is what we've we've been playing for to put ourselves in these spots. What more could we ask for? 
we've been hot lately. Uh, you know, we had one loss uh, three games ago, but uh, we have been red hot. We've really been climbing the table, and um, you know, this is this is as important as it gets. The problem is. Hertha was the only shutout of the season we've had so far. We only had three shots on goal that game. Now things have changed a lot since then. Francisco Trincao has come on guns a blazing. But this is still a good defensive team that, that was our only time shut out on the entire season. We're going to stick with the 3-4-2-1 that's been working for us. No need to change anything. We do get Phil Foden back, but he's not at full strength. So he's going to come off the bench, and Josh Vagneman's going to get his first start of the season out wide. Again, we're having stamina issues and depth issues uh, with, with Vindal out and all these games in a short period of time. Um, and then here you see Vagneman right off the bat. He has fantastic speed out wide, and that's so important in this formation with, with these, these middles, the left and right mid. Can't quite make anything out of it as we try to get a shot off. Ooh, off the post. A good start, a good look. That's more offense than we had the entire time we played them last game. So it's a good sign, hopefully, of things to come. We need to play better defense, though. This is this is getting risky here. As we get away with one, we save the ball. Now we're going to get on the counterattack. This is where we really thrive, in, in the open field with the counterattack. When we have numbers, we don't have numbers here. We're really trying to make something happen. Kaseki dribbling around, fighting for it. Max Agustin. So good in the open field. Back to Ibrahim Sangre. Up to Egestine. And was there a foul? There was a foul. Trincao fouled just outside the box. Just outside the box. He's going to try another free kick. Oh, another post. This one's even closer. I'm telling you, we're going to get one of these. We're going to get one of these at some point, I swear to you. That is the closest one we've had yet. He is knocking on the door with these free kicks. So we go to halftime. No shots on target. Only two shots on goal, including one that hit the post. I guess that doesn't count as on target. Technically it's not. But 0-0, again, a tough defensive battle. As it was when we played Hertha last time. This is just what you expect, especially now we're playing in the snow. Even though it's March. Thanks, Germany. As you see, a good look. A good look from McKinney and a, and a good save. That's a that's a strong shot from from Weston McKinney. Now he's playing up in this attacker role. He's a good defender, but he's he's no slouch on offense either. I knew this was going to be a tough defensive game, and we had limited options with Foden on the bench, so we did what we had to do. Now Foden's going to come on for Ryan Gravenberch, who was in that other uh, attacking mid spot. This is his first time being used as a sub. I just knew I wasn't going to get a full game out of him and I wanted to have him at the end rather than burn him by about this point in the game. And you see right off the bat making a difference. He's just so smooth out there trying to get a, trying to find an open man. Unable to do so. I'm gonna try and reset. Nothing doing. Nothing doing. So as you've seen in a couple of the videos we're having some issues with saves. We did give up a goal. It's killing me that this is all I've got. I've got a replay of it, and you see kind of how he got wide open. And he just buries it on the short side past Maximiano. It's a goal we really shouldn't give up. It's a goal he saves a lot, but just far too wide open uh, over the middle. And that's going to make it one nothing. And we really have not been able to generate much offense. A couple of decent shots here and there, um, but, but not a ton of action. So... Once again, we're going to bring on uh, Jeremy Doku for Weston McKinney, see if we can't use that speed to spark this offense. We try to get up ahead, Foden looking for a man, cuts back, turns, fires, oh, just wide. Just wide. One of our better looks of the game, but still not an on-target shot. Really just not able to get anything going, and that's going to be it. We have been shut out by Hertha again. For the second time this season and that's a bad loss there's no way around it there's no other way around it you know it, it was a tough game it was a tough game it's not like we played poorly but that's a loss that's that loss uh, you know is, is what's going to keep us out of a European spot this year we had to win that game we've really put ourselves behind the eight ball now and if we if we miss if we miss a European spot at the end of the season, it's going to be real easy to look back at, at this game and the game uh, against them earlier in the season and just say, how did we get shut out when we've been scoring goals 
the way we have been this year. Uh, something about their defense is just getting the best of us. That's you know three shots on target the whole game. It's just not going to get it done. It's not going to get you three points. It's not even going to get you one point in this case. So uh, a bad loss, a devastating loss in a tough game. And uh, now we've got some work to do. Um, you know, you see now we're five points back of seventh place. We are uh, six points back of, of a guaranteed European spot. And now we got to play Leverkusen, who is, is a good team, is sitting in fourth, and uh, is a high-scoring team, uh, second in the league in goals. And we're not exactly stopping anybody. So we've really got our work cut out for us here as, as we take on our, our third match of the episode and we get ready for Bayer Leverkusen. Luckily, we are back at home. Back at home, got some green and white in the stands. That's always a good sign. We beat Leverkusen on the road, and, and frankly, it was a whooping. Um, we, we came out and just dominated. And, uh, and we got Phil Foden back at full strength, so it'll be interesting to see uh, if we can't get the offensive uh, juggernaut rolling again. I'm going to stick with the 3, 4, 2, 1 that we've been using. Graven Birch is going to get another start. He's really stepped in for... Uh, uh, Owen Vindal in his absence and become uh, the, the, the other starter out there. And everybody's back to full stamina. We had about a week in between games here, thank goodness. We have not had a full stamina roster in, in three games. I want to show you this Leverkusen roster and, and their starting lineup because it's no wonder they're scoring so many, uh, so many goals. Between Diaby and Hyvertz, who'd you expect? And then they have Gabriel Jesus in this particular uh, in this particular career, so they have some serious offensive firepower for us to contend with, and this uh, this may not be pretty, or at the very least, it may be a bit of a shootout. So getting off uh, getting off to a start here, right off the bat, trying to make something happen, and here we go, turn it over, and you can see the pressure right right from the start, the the amount of pressure that they're coming. Jesus is chasing. Chasing me down and, and Hyverts and hopefully this can this can you know work against them and, and give me a chance to, to counterattack and kill their stamina a little bit. But so far earlier in the game, it's really just resulted in turnovers. As you see, Jesus on the attack cuts back up ahead, and it's an early goal. Not surprising, it's an early goal. Just too much firepower here at the start, and this tremendous pressure right off the bat. You see the little cut by Jesus. Great pass, and Hyvertz is just there to, uh, to to bury it. Not even a tough shot. <laughs> a little little inside out. That wasn't real pretty, but uh, he certainly made it work. The the pressure right off the bat, and, and you know almost every one of these teams gives you a good high press. As you see, Kai Hyvertz is 16 goals in the Bundesliga so far. He's among the league leaders, so that's going to be trouble. How about we see him again? You see this tremendous high pressure. I mean, it's tough to even get it over the midfield mark. And if you can, if you can, you know, wear them out. And a lot of these younger guys do have lower stamina. Although I don't think Jesus and, and, and Havertz are, are among them. But you know, you can wear them out and get them out of the game, which helps. But is the damage done by then? Uh, so that's always the question. Phil Foden up ahead to Francisco Trincao, and there's the equalizer. There's the equalizer, and that was not a counterattack. That was just kind of regular. Uh, you know, third of the field play, but a great little read by both Trincao and Foden. Foden kind of finds him up ahead. Trincao makes a great run, and he gets a point blank shot, and he doesn't miss that. He's not gonna miss it. A great finish by Francisco Trincao to even the score, and, and like I said, we're gonna have to just run with him. That's 14 now in the Bundesliga. He's two behind Havertz. Oh, for now. We're not done scoring here, folks, and neither are they. I'm sure of it. 18th minute, pressure on, pressure on. Really just you know, having to use Maximiano a lot, which you don't like to do, because then they do this. Sangare trying to get it out of there. Just tries to get it up ahead, tries to get it out of bounds. Really can't do it. And here they are, building another attack. So much pressure, we can't quite get back into place, and just wide open. Oh, Maximiano saves the day. Saves the day, that could have been real trouble. Oh, but he gives it away. He gives it away trying to find a man. I mean, this pressure starts the second the second we even try to clear the ball. And it's up ahead. Havertz again. 
Oh, another great save by Maximiano. Single-handedly keeping it at 1-1. Agustin, up to Trincao. Ooh, almost had his second of the day. A great save by Lindelof. A great save. That was a good look. He was open at the last second. Just sticks a knee in there. 42nd minute. End of the first half. Winding down. Oh, and a nice pass up ahead. Back to the middle. Oh, Havertz again. Just buries it. And there's nothing we can do. I mean, that's good. That's good. He's covered. I don't, know, I don't know what Maximiano's doing. Just jumping up in the air like a moron. This is why this is why Havertz is is among the top of the of the Bundesliga table in goals scored. He just he's a lot like Trincao. He just has a he's better, <laughs> frankly, but he's just got a knack for finding uh, finding a spot. So as the as the first half winds down, we're making a last minute run. Ooh, try to try to even it up there. Uh, Johannes Agustin, but nothing doing. We are going to get a corner. These have not resulted in much for us this year. Short into Trincao. Cuts across. Ooh, wide open, and he finds the net. Can you believe it? Does that count as a corner converted? I don't know. I don't care. It's a tie ball game. Francisco Trincao says, Anything you do, Kai Havertz, I can do better. Or at least as well. Hot on his tails in the Bundesliga goal scoring race. Just makes a little a little turn and cut off the short corner. Caught him sleeping and buries it. He's up to 15 on the season, two and a half, and that's his second brace in three games. So not shockingly, a high scoring shootout, but a bit surprising to uh, to be going in tied after that late goal by Leverkusen. And then a late goal of our own, but at least we're getting some some shots on goal here and, and plenty of offensive chances. As you see us building early in the second half, another good look. Ooh, Foden almost on the, uh, almost able to, to convert one there and almost got the rebound, but unable to, to finish it off. Decent, well not great defense, but we got away with it. Now we're on the counterattack, and this is where we want to be, Johannes Agustin. Waiting, baiting the defense up ahead to his brother, up ahead to Trincao, cuts back, oh, single-handedly, beats his man, and this is, we know what this is going to be, it's a hat trick, baby, it's a hat trick for Francisco Trincao, he will not let someone else steal the show, not at home, not in his house, hat trick, Francisco Trincao, and it gives Werder Bremen the lead. Look at that, just makes the move, does it on his own. And then at that point, he's got the whole goal to work with. And the goalkeeper is just a sitting duck. 3-2, Werder Bremen. Overtakes Phil Foden for the team lead in, in goals, at least in the Bundesliga. Foden's got a few others in, uh, in, in the Pokal, but... So 3-2, now we're going to go defense for offense here, bring Jacques Bajoul in and uh, see if we can't hold on to this lead. Either easier said than done. Hopefully now, now this offensive attack led by Jesus right there, uh, helping out hybrids, is starting to get tired a little bit, hopefully. We got away with one there. That's a, that's a clean look. That's a clean look. He curves that around and buries it more often than not. We definitely got away with one there. So we're going to bring in Vagnemann for, uh, for Graven Birch again, a little defense for offense here and, and a little speed to help us out. We're really just trying to get out of here with this three points as you get to the 86th minute. Been playing good defense up ahead to Foden. Oh, and he seals it. That's the nail in the coffin. What a pass from Max Egestein threading the defense and Phil Foden with the one-touch goal. Absolutely drains it. Without a doubt, look at this pass, look at the seam right there, and a great cut by Foden. Everyone's out of position, goalkeeper tries to get out there, can't get there in time. And Phil Foden just buries it. Absolutely fantastic offensive performance. Francisco Trincao, the highlight, but Phil Foden not to be outdone, says, you're not taking my lead, son. I still play here too. And that's it, 4-2. And that's a big win to get us back on track after a bad loss to Hertha. That really helps uh, get us back on track with these uh, 
in the, in the Bundesliga table. So after all that action, where do we end up? Well, kind of right back where we started. We're still in 8th place. We're still 2 points behind Hertha. We're still uh, 6 points out of, a, out of a European guaranteed spot. So, you know, on the one hand, much ado about nothing. But on the other hand, we're that much closer to the end of the season and we're still in the race. So, you know, it's, it's time to start winning some games. But we, you know, we won 2 out of 3, but we can't have losses against teams we're chasing in the table. So that's really where we need to... Uh, need to step up and, and take advantage of our opportunities and you know we've taken advantage of some but not enough and that's going to be the problem moving forward if you haven't already done so please hit that subscribe button for me don't forget to follow us on twitter at total fifa cm on instagram at total fifa career mode and on our website at total fifa career mode.com Check out some of our previous videos in this series. Like I said, this is episode 17, so we're pretty far along here. If you haven't checked them out, uh, you know, give them a look now and, and see how we got to where we're going here. Thanks for joining us, as always, on Werder Bremen Retake the Bundesliga. This is Total FIFA. Career Mode.